Zero tax libertarian city. Uh, in some city and all of his attempts failed. It's funny as fuck. Wait, this guy played city skyline and tried to make a zero tax city. A challenge I have long avoided since it looked implausible. Thanks to unco unconventional modern fiscal strategies. Now you can have a city that simply doesn't tax its population. Tried to build a city with zero percent tax in cities skylines. It's not a big secret that no one likes paying taxes. And some people think that if we just charge people only for the public services they chose to use, we could create a more fair, just taxation system in our country. It sounds good. So I set out with the intention of seeing if this would be possible in a simulation with a basic starter city in city skylines. Let's start at square one. Normally in city skylines, the lowest you can drop taxes in a standard game is 1%. I think it's against the spirit of the challenge to allow even that, so we're going to open our handy dandy policy based tax menu to drop the taxes in every sector, except industrial, which isn't allowed for some reason. And that'll get our entire city's taxes down to a true 0%. Done. So before we've begun, we've set out the foundations in our- I love this concept so much. This is brilliant. Policies for a 0% tax city. Okay, but now funding it is going to be a whole different project. We need some default starting cap- I was about to say, yeah, how do you- how do you initiate the starting capital to, like, build the city without any taxes whatsoever, including roads and stuff? Not to be like too much of a uh, actually kind of guy, but capital or we won't be able to build anything. Five hundred thousand dollars with absolutely nothing in our city aside from the interstate entryway ramp. We are neither gaining nor losing money. Entry highway maintenance costs are subsidized by the state, so that's out of our fiscal hands. But from the moment we lay our first roads, it's going to be very expensive to grow and maintain. Our See, this is what I mean. Like even. Uh, obviously, this is a satirical, you know, this is a video that is like supposed to prove that point and, and they are proving that point. They're going to prove the point that it doesn't work. Right. But like, even in this circumstance, even in this circumstance, like there's so much amenities and public infrastructure that uh, that is a given that you like get for either free. But like the reality is it's the state that paid for it. it's the taxes that paid for in our it. city. So we need to plan ahead. Cash flows don't manage themselves, and if we run out of money, the challenge is over. Let's start with first things first. Every city needs power, water, and roads. When we start building roads for our homes, they're going to be very pricey to maintain. Since we don't want to charge people, we'll quickly run out of money, so we can kiss all traditional ideas of building up a normal city goodbye. The first city I built relied upon tourism to secure public funding. There were tolls to enter and exit the city, and they were making tens of dollars from travelers just at the gates alone. Once they entered the town, the strategy was that once we had them trapped inside, we'd rake in the dough from using popular tourist locations, such as our hot air balloon rental service, as well as our seaside restaurant, fishing pier, and jet ski ride pavilion. On paper, the plan was foolproof. But in execution, the lack of a fire department, police force, healthcare, and corpse disposal services meant that the few dollars we had each month went toward barely securing enough water and power for the city to operate. Crime was rampant. People got sick and just died. Then leftover human corpses filled up the restaurant and the other tourist sites, making them unattractive venues for visitors and the hot air balloon riders just flew off and away into the sky. There wasn't really any way to enforce that. Without any tourism or anyone entering the city anymore, all the homes were abandoned, everyone just left, and the city went deep into the red as crime and fire spread. In a word- Yeah, I don't think this guy understands, like, uh, that's a libertarian paradise, okay? And Kapistan, it just works. Even when it doesn't work, it works. Guess what? I bet the age of consent was very low. Uh, it was zero, and therefore probably paradise. Word, it failed. So I decided to cut my losses and just try again. I had learned lots from this first city, and I could use it to build the second one the right way. The second city. After the first one failed, I saved my progress and started fresh. If tourism didn't work, what could be the answer? I decided that the tolls in the first city were a pretty good idea. So I can literally happened in Grafton, New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, Grafton, New Hampshire. Uh, there was a book written about this exact city, uh, tried to do this literal thing. And, uh, they had such a gigantic bear problem that they could not fucking deal with that. Like the bears basically started running the goddamn show. 
those at the only entrance to the town. Since this was literally the only thing that was working for me, I decided to find a way to force them to pay tolls at every possible turn to try to squeeze as much cash as I possibly could out of the population. Even if it was trivial and inconvenient, like putting all of the residential areas on one side of the river, and then all the commercial and office zones on the other side of the river, connected only by a very narrow bridge and an expensive toll booth. This nearly worked if it weren't for the fact that almost everyone in the town was uneducated and too stupid to work in an office building. We tried funding elementary schools with the meager profits from the few people who were smart enough to work in an office. But this town also, unfortunately, ended in a downward taxation spiral, which concluded with all the familiar sights and sounds of dead people, abandoned buildings, and men in balaclavas up to no good. The third city. They say the third time's the charm. Surely with all the failures from the first two dumpster fires, we can now put something together. And we did. The third city was the first city that was architecturally attractive and had a sensible plan for funding. Now we had toll booths not only at the entrance, but also just kind of nearby the town to suck the maximum amount of money from anyone who came anywhere remotely close to our borders. An attractive layout with a grid of four spherical neighborhoods for residential, commercial, industrial, and corporate buildings. Not only were we able to max out the tolls for passing between neighborhoods, but we were also able to maximize the effective radius. Bro made Florida. Like he literally remade Florida, dog. That's so funny. This is like, add on the reality that it's also sinking every fucking year into the water and you have Florida. I saw a really funny Twitter thread about like some crypto bro libertarian maximalist guy who was like, I don't really understand. Like I got kicked out of coverage on my insurance when we moved into our new place. And for some weird reason, like we just can't find any kind of insurance policy that we can work with in the state of Florida. Do they not realize that there's so much development happening here? And like, and it's so funny because like, yeah, insurance is like one of the avenues where they just don't fuck around. You got, you got quants, you got, these are, these are guys doing actuarial sciences and they have decided that like mathematically speaking, there is no reason why, uh, uh, you know, there is no money to be made in the short term or the long term with any kind of fucking insurance coverage in Florida because it's like. It's, it's fucked. It's completely fucked. You know what I mean? I want to see if I can find the Twitter thread. Hold on. Yeah, there's no ROI in protecting Florida. Exactly. And it's so funny that they're just like completely oblivious to this reality where they are, they're like, I don't get it. Like, these guys must be stupid. You can't leave uh, so close. You can't live so close to the shore, or flooding insurance won't cover it in the state of Florida. Um, car insurance rep here. A lot of people are surprised when they move to Florida and their rates go up because it's a high risk state. Yeah, because they have no understanding of how bad Florida drivers are. <laughs> That's what it is. <sighs> um. That's the main reason why any insurance is 2x the amount anywhere outside of Florida. 100% of Florida drivers are objectively awful. Yes. I have literally never in my entire fucking life felt so much fear when I'm in an Uber as I have in the state of Florida. When you are in the state of Florida, anywhere you go, it could be a fucking 25-mile zone. It could be like literally inside of a city, okay, urban development, it's still absolutely fucking literally terrifying, and LA drivers are dog shit, California drivers also notoriously dog shit, right, Texas drivers also very bad, but if I were to rank it, Florida is so high up there that like even Texas drivers don't touch it, okay, no, there's no worse driver in the continental United States than the Florida driver, Okay, I promise you, if you do not, if you've never been to Florida, you will never understand this. Get into any Uber in the state of Florida. Get into any Uber in the state of Florida. It is always a life or death situation when it doesn't have to be. Okay, 
it literally does not have to be a life or death situation, and it somehow ends up becoming a life or death situation. They drive in the most erratic fashion for no particular reason. Like, you got, it's a 35-mile zone, there's a red light, and this dude is going 70, and he's bobbing and weaving through traffic for no fucking reason, and you're like, I don't know how to tell you that this is terrifying, and there's no reason for you to do this. Please do not do this, sir. Spoke to a large multifamily firm active in Florida today. Their insurance is expiring on a 300-unit, 90s, uh, 90s built deal uh, in St. Petersburg. They told me they can't get a single company to offer them a renewal. Can this be real? The irony is Florida is the number one state in the national uh, for in-migration and one of the hottest investment markets. Will be very interesting to see how this plays out. Yep, part of the reason why I moved out in 2019. Next step is Florida's real estate will resemble the Keys. All cash plus self-insurance. It's like... Didn't a congressman in Florida get shot over a fender bender? Yes, he did. Because he shot first, by the way. It was a state representative. And he literally fucking tried to shoot someone in a... In a you know, in like a fender bender situation, road rage incident. And then the dude got out of his fucking Prius and just clapped his ass cheeks, dude. He was like two blocks away from his home too. It was awesome. Anyway, the worst place in the U.S. for driving. I'm from Montreal and the drivers are aggressive here, but Florida's unreal. Yeah. Did he die? Yeah, no, he killed him. Yeah, the... the 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 Prius bandit, dude. He fucking slid. Yeah, it wasn't the rep's first time that happened either. Exactly. He had gotten into road rage incidents before. So, here it is. Yes, the state intervened in the her, uh, insurance market a few years ago to fix a problem caused by a hurricane. They made the problem worse. It will probably take five to seven years to fix. You can search the problem to detail the complex for a tweet. So, so yeah, it was the liberal driller. Yeah, it was actually because the state in, interfered. It's not, it's not the free market guys. Trust me. And it's not like any sort of external factors. It's the state. I had a Florida's Here. property insurance crisis for months. We've been talking about insurance companies going bankrupt, leaving state and leaving millions of Floridians scrambling to find insurance and tonight late word that yet another insurance company is calling it quits. So who's now left behind to help homeowners? ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit walking us through the mess. Thousands more Florida homeowners will soon be without property insurance. It's so funny. Last week, the Office of Insurance Regulation moved forward with placing United Property and Casualty Insurance into receivership. This comes after their insurer was declared insolvent following higher than expected losses from Hurricane Ian. UPC failed because of a high volume of Hurricane Ian claims combined with the fact they did not have an adequate level of reinsurance coverage, which insurers typically need to make sure they don't fail after a major. This is a, this is a government interference problem for sure. Okay, let me just explain why. It's because the government hasn't interfered from the start that makes it impossible for insurance companies to continue doing property insurance in a state where they routinely act like climate change is not real and the 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 regular the now regular occurrence of like once in a lifetime hurricanes uh has made it impossible and the government is not like building infrastructure against that sort of thing and they're also not like zoning appropriately for that sort of thing so when that happens of course you can't fucking like literally you can't design a, 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 an insurance plan that works for it and every fucking insurance company goes bankrupt when they cannot, when the, in the inevitable, uh, when the inevitable happens and they don't have enough uh, to, to pay for the coverage. Insurance or not, the Florida old heads will still be here now and forever come hurricane or high water. I know, I know. Except you don't have fucking gills, dog. So when your home is underwater, good luck.
major loss like a hurricane. Earlier this month, Tampa Bay sl- Oh, I can confirm I work in a PNC holding company and you're 100% correct. No one will write the business and more importantly, no one will enter into reinsurance. Applied insurance took over 72,000 of United's policies, but is not liable for claims filed before February 1st. Mark Freelander with Insurance Information Institute tells me the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association will step in to help pay United claims. The nonprofit was created to handle claims of insolvent companies and collect surcharge on insurance premiums to cover additional costs. The decision to place UPC in receivership is yet another hit to Florida's property insurance market. Now with UPC, that's actually 10 Florida insurance companies that have failed since the beginning of 2021. State-backed insurer of last resort citizens' property insurance has provided policies to thousands of homeowners who lost coverage because of last year's insolvencies. The best advice that we can give United policyholders right now is to contact your agent. Um, your agent is going to be sort of your go-to person. As- Dude, that's capitalist innovation, baby. Um, state doesn't interfere when it's supposed to, Okay. You don't build contingencies, then uh, there's no regulation. There's no regulatory mechanism that tells you don't build here and don't build like this, okay? And then on, then you build the fucking dog shit homes, the cookie cutter dog shit homes. They get fucking wiped out. You have insurance. Insurance company goes under, but guess what? That's time for innovation. Now you have insurance on the insurance companies. Now you got the. Now you got a new company that is going to uh, <laughs> that is going to make money <laughs> in the interim period because the other company went uh, bankrupt, which is awesome. You know what I mean? It's just great. That's the only type of contingency you get under capitalism is one that uh, is the only type of innovation that you get is and the only type of contingency that you get is going to be the guys that come in afterwards to make even more money off of your fucking dying corpse. Okay. Perfect system. I don't understand. Make Shut the up. Transition. Um, they are the ones that are going to be best suited, you know, best able to kind of take your your individual needs. Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. So yeah, yes, yeah, so it's public service. Let's continue. Like this is, the reason why we watched it because City Three was basically Florida care and education. Unfortunately, this also made it highly flammable, and each neighborhood was a massive fire hazard. I had faith in this town. I mean, it almost broke even, too, even with several municipal services. But its population also unfortunately suffered from a catastrophic downward spiral after everyone's jobs were erased, along with the industrial district, by the Great Fire of August 2023. Okay, so that didn't work, but the fourth city, as Along with PNC, we also do crop and livestock insurance, which is facing similar issues. But unlike Florida, USDA helps farmers and ranchers with setting the price and safeguarding against part of the losses. But with climate change, the last few years, our subsidiary operated in severe losses thanks to climate change. Yep. This is where everything really started coming together. I hadn't failed. I had just not succeeded three times in a row. Now, not only did we have the tolls nearby, into, and just around the town, but now we began experimenting with a new way of making money. That is, erecting an expensive amusement park between the residential zone and the rest- Literally Florida. I love that, like, the ultimate goal of, like, libertarian paradise is building Florida, except city skylines probably doesn't have, like, maximum weather conditions. I've never played it, but, like- this is Florida, but with like extreme weather conditions maxed out and it's like constant, consistently sinking, okay? ...of the city where all the jobs and services were located. It was not a good amusement park. It was just a path between two entrances. That is to say, there was nothing amusing about it, but it became growingly profitable, so much to the point that I decided to make more of them and then make them even shorter so that people would have to pay for multiple amusement parks containing just more paths if they wanted to get to work. Still in the red. At this point in time, I decided that the traditional asphalt roads were becoming too expensive to maintain. And so I used my resources to replace them all with- For the record, I don't think this guy's a libertarian. He's making fun of, like, libertarian end cap policies in, like, city building. Much less expensive dirt roads. At long last, our city was finally breaking even. 
Just kidding, it actually wasn't. It took until the fifth city for it to really break even. But who truly knows after I tried to sort through all the save files I named badly. The point is, this time we had fires, crime, dead bodies, and garbage all covered by funding from a gamut of four amusement parks all in a row. Broad Park, Groveland, Fun World, and who could forget Belmont Experience, where people fought every morning over not enough parking spots to allow the peaceful passage of pedestrian foot traffic through one park, across, or rather around the street, across the next park, around another street, then then all over again, then followed by- I see no problem with this. This is beautiful. This is the beautiful, sun, sunny, sunshine state of Florida. By a long what? walk to work on the dirt road. And that's only one way. Also, everyone lives right near the dump. And that's just barely breaking even by maybe 10 or 20 dollars a month until of course the astronomical sanitation bill eats into our city's budget and causes the undesirable pileup of garbage in everyone's house it's really hard to keep track of what's even going on in this city since we're always panicking about the budget and barely surviving by just a few dollars and the city still had problems and expenses were still teetering on being too expensive i got rid of the crematorium because it was too expensive to burn the bodies. And I just started dumping the dead bodies into cemeteries, located right next to the dump on either side of town. We'd deal with all that later. Right now, the more pressing concern was that businesses wanted people that were smart, and everyone was dumb in town. No one had achieved more than an element Literally Florida. Oh my god. <laughs> preschool education. I keep so when these commercial myself, enterprises but... were built, Unfortunately, they were abandoned when the staff didn't know how to run the companies because they were too stupid. Still, demand soared for 0% residential tax. This is I'll like, this is like, <laughs> dude, this is so good. I love this video and I love, I love how he just basically built like a Texas, Florida, uh, merger. Okay. And the issue is like, <laughs> I mean, this would be more Floridian if, like, everyone that went down there was, like, a crypto bro or just, like, interested in schemes. Like, their understanding of business was just schemes, okay? Like, money-making schemes that always fail. All that despite the fact that there were no jobs in town. So running out of space, we zoned denser housing projects, and we started just using martial law to demolish businesses right after they were built if it looked like that they were going to aim to recruit people that were just too smart for our town. It's not morally dubious, it's for the common good. It was at this point in time that I learned how to double the ticket prices in all the amusement parks joining the residential and commercial sides of town, thereby nearly doubling our monthly tax income, as well as squeezing in a zoo at the end of the expensive transportation route. Now it cost $200 just to walk from one side of town to the other. Fortunately, this added a surprise surplus to our budget, allowing us to build a high school to educate our smooth-brained citizens. This then allowed us to reopen the office buildings and end the ethically questionable and morally dubious practice of state-ordered demolitions on newly erected businesses to prevent gentrification. Finally, now our city wasn't even collecting the little wealth granted by the industrial zones, and it was a true 0% tax city at long last. And honestly, it wasn't all that far off from several hypothetical libertarian fantasies. Until the dead bodies started piling up, and the garbage situation got out of hand. What to do? They couldn't be demolished by traditional means, that's not allowed. At this point in time, of all the tools at my disposal, only one seemed inviting and crazy enough to Sinkhole. work. A meteor. No one would suspect that, that the state, I mean, that the catastrophic meteor of August 2024 was an inside job, a redirecting of a meteor, but it would take out the garbage and the dead bodies. You know, it doesn't interfere with the people who are alive. They don't have to pay tax. Just the dead people have to get hit by a meteor and it destroys all the garbage and probably sends it horribly out into the atmosphere, but I mean, it's free, so, you know, I did what I had to to make this city tax. The Florida version of this is not a meteor, but instead it's sinkholes. Tax free. Finally, I had achieved my goal questionably sustainable city with zero dollar tax that costs four hundred dollars to walk around in but only if you decide to walk through part of it which as it happens most people have to but they could just choose to stay home 
and that's their decision. I believe I did a good job. You can compliment me down there in the compliment section of the video. Even if it took me five attempts, I believe I've made my point. Zero percent tax city achieved. Anyway, a big thanks to my <coughs> patrons, all of whom consensually brilliant. choose to pay me to make these videos. I'm ambiguous amphibian. Until next time. It's fucking brilliant, dude. Pays 200 bucks every day to walk from one side of town to the other. Thank God there are no taxes in this free city. Taxation is theft and the right to choose to commute through a series of expensive yet barren amusement parks to survive is freedom. Yeah, I mean, I love that, like, everybody got the point. I mean, this, this so perfectly, this so perfectly got to the point. That's it. What the fuck is this? This guy taught us how to be alpha you know men? This is from one year ago.